Hey, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Chris here, and I'm also with Chris. Uh, Mark's not with us. He's actually recovering from the uh, surgery on his arm. But uh, we are um, heading over to Eastern Washington today. We're going over to the Blewett Mining District, and we're going to check out some mines over there. Uh, Chris knows a guy over there. Uh, all these places we're going are on private property, so uh, you can't really go in there, but we have permission, so we're going to go in there and check it out. So. Uh, you guys will see what we see, and uh, we'll see you guys on the road. So, hey guys, we're at the Blue East Mining District here, and uh, Chris and I are going to explore some of the mines that are up here today. I'm not sure which ones we're going to get into, but uh, he knows the guys that own this property it's private property but uh, we're gonna go and check out some of the spots so we'll check in see you guys all right we are at a mine called the meteor mine and uh, it's locked, so we can't get in there. Uh, can you tell us about this one, Chris? Uh, well, this one goes in. There should be still about uh, 1,300 feet. And then oh, wow. Maybe, there might be about 1,800 feet. But if you can get through the old collapse that's in here, yeah. you go another 200 feet after that, and there's a manway and a raise that goes up to the Pashastin Tunnel. Huh. So that's kind of cool. So what, which one are we going to go try to find next? Uh, we'll head up to Shaston. To Shaston? Yeah, and see what that looks like. Okay, cool. Holy crap. <laughs> Can't get in there either. Wow. We dug this whole thing open. Holy crap. Let me turn my light on. Yeah, we took this all the way down with a dozer. All right, guys. So about how long ago were you here? Well, it's been a while. Not 10 years ago? So 10 years ago, this was open. And... Uh, now it's been uh, closed again. It's all gated off too. So, just to show you how quick this stuff goes back <laughs> yeah. to nature. So this, what uh, what used to be the, here, Chris? This is the Golden Eagle mill site. Oh, really? Yeah, so you can so you have a lower level, and then there's a mid level, and then probably the crushers were up there. You can see some of the wood yeah. and the bushes, and then there was. Big cyanide tank out here, and uh, it's all gone now. Yeah, pretty much nothing left. A little bit of cabling over here, some old rusted cable. Yeah, actually, like I said, if you do a video, you can put in the picture of what it looks like now. Yeah, and we I have a picture of this standing from like over there, and it's pretty cool looking. Looks like up there on the hill, you can see where the uh, it was flat up there where there was something up there. Yeah, there's this is a switchback. We'll go up now. What's there. up there? There's some, uh, some structure up there. Some metal, some wood, and crap. Yeah, we left that there years ago. Huh. I took the excavator in here and pulled all that material back from the wall. Yeah, to see what was in there, and we found some metal bars and some cable. And I thought we might find something else, but we really didn't. And which, uh, which, which, which mine was this mill to? This was the Golden Eagle, which is right up the hill. Okay. And we'll go up and check that one out too today. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, it was pretty cool. So you had big building here, tanks, and then they had an ore pile over here in the woods. Huh. And there was some kind of a, it looked like a tram or something that they used to bring down here. I think they were milling ore from several locations. Wow. And there used to be, which is weird because we always saw a tailing pile here. Yeah. But we didn't know what it was for. And then when we were clearing off the road, the dirt split away and a tunnel popped open. Huh. And it was about 175 feet. 
which is really weird because it's not on any maps. You guys can't see it, but right, right in there, there's another, another mine or tunnel. Huh? It's covered up. Goes to show you when you see a telling tower, there's always a mine nearby. Yep. This telling tower is down here, like we can never figure it out. Let's go this way. Oh, that's the direction we're going. So this uh, this mine here is called a hummingbird mine, and uh, Chris has been uh, pretty heavily involved with this mine. So Chris, tell us about it. Uh, I think we we dug it open the first time. I think in around 2000, and then uh, we came back in here and kind of dug it open again. And then we found out there was a collapse, like about a 70, 80 feet inside. And then we eventually dug the entire thing out by hand, and. Uh, that was a lot of work and then a few years after that as we we dug out the first collapse by hand as well with wheelbarrows and then we filled all this in and then we filled all that in and then once we put the road in then we were able to come back over here and do more and then we uh we timbered the collab the first collapse which was quite a bit of work and we took out probably man i'm trying to think it was like probably 500 wheelbarrows it was a lot of material. Wow. Yeah. To clean that first maybe 80, 90 feet of this tunnel was a lot of work. And then got the portal in, got the gate on, cleaned out the first section. And then um, we put the uh, started laying track in there because the collapse where the vein was at about 185 feet. That we got back there, you couldn't see anything, just a pile of muck. But we could see a little bit of ore there, so we knew we were right near the vein. So we laid the track. We put all that track in probably in 2003 and four. Um, I think by 2005 we had it. We were mucking that collapse out, and then uh, we took out about 600 ore car loads. Yeah, about 600. I think our record was about 80 in one day. Wow. Yeah, that was a long, long. We tried to get right through. We completely dug through the collapse to the back wall. And then we cleaned out all the sides and then one of the ore chutes. And uh, then we, you can see where, so the collapse, when we got to the collapse, we were right about here. So this pile used to go around that tree and way over towards the, almost towards the outhouse. Mm, okay. But then I came in with an excavator and outhouse I cleaned all right that there. dirt out. So you can see how big this pile is. Yeah. And then the rest of it we dumped. We had built a trussle at one time. There was a big trussle here. And we kept filling it in. And um, and then when I brought the excavator and I leveled it all out so we could get in here. And, wow. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Cool. And then we cut that tree right there. And I got video of all that pictures. And then we cut into massive timbers. I mean, tons of timbers. Uh, and then we hauled it all in on the flat car. Which all these were fresh timbers too when these big logs here were all fresh and skinned and they were all going to go in as well. Yeah. And they've been sitting here and he never did anything. But Yeah. Yeah, we timbered. I put in uh, four sets of timbers and then we put in, an, I built an ore chute, got it all ready with a manway, put it all back together and then we, that was it. <laughs> nothing since. <laughs> yeah, nothing right. since. Okay, right. we are at the Golden Eagle Mine. And uh, this belongs to one of Chris's friends. But uh, I'll just show you the terrain around here. This is really up to this typical Eastern Washington. Got all the pine trees and everything like that. We don't have all the underbrush that we typically have to deal with on the, the west side of the state. So um, this is an active claim. So Dan's, his buddy Dan's still doing stuff here. But uh, there's a tree that has kind of fallen over here but um <clears throat> the entrance to the the mine is actually right back there so uh we'll head over there in a second so anyway pretty cool let's see what's inside hey guys getting ready to head on in we'll see you guys inside all right peace out Got some rats in here. 
pack rats. You can see their little, their little nests right here. Pretty, well, there's some fresh stuff in there. But yeah, they're pretty smelly. So they're not as bad as the ones you ran into in the, uh, the silver, the silver tip mine. All right, so this is actually pretty, uh, well, it was nice. I could stand up straight. Everything. I'm gonna turn that light off. I got a headlamp here. And I'd give it a little try. It's a new headlamp, guys. I'm actually gonna see what I can do. You guys think of that. And then I'm gonna supplement it with um, Chris up here. This is a really nice long shaft. Nice, I like it. already there's there's a there's a vein there huh. hey uh, by the way I got a I'm starting to mount I'm starting to mount a GoPro on the top of my head my helmet uh, it's the, can you see if the red lights blinking yeah okay right, here's another side of that so yeah I think when it changed certainty I don't I don't really know why then you can see when they Now you can tell the echo goes away back here a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to the left. Yeah. That's cool. The rock keeps changing the material that it's in. Now I can hear kind of a my voice change going through yeah, here. Yeah, your voice will change. But what causes that? Uh, the density of the rock. Now what, uh, if it echo, what does that mean? Echo is solid. And if it's not echoey? Yes. Porous? Uh, yeah, and that's actually not good, right? Yeah, I mean, it, I never see hardly any pop off a wall. But no, but I mean, typically though, if you get the, the theory is, if you find something that has no echo, it's it's really crumbly or cracked. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna take a picture down. This is cool. Sure. I can't remember how. This is kind of cool, guys. The, uh, the tunnel splits, it goes to the right and it goes to the left. Now, uh, typically, I like to kind of do what uh, Frank does, and Frank's goes to the right, right hand rule. However, um, Chris went over to the left, so I'm going to follow Chris down here and see what we got. Pack rat crap. Are you the back? Yeah, pretty much. It's kind of cool. This uh, this serpent seems like glass, you know. There's quite a bit of tunnel in here. And you can hear the no echo and yeah. brittle. And this stuff is like it's like volcanic glass almost. Yeah, go back there. You can see around the corner. It's kind of cool. These are some of the original timbers here. Yeah, obviously. yeah, this is some yeah. of the timber work they put up in here. You can see the square set pretty good up there too, all notched out. So it's kind of neat, still standing. That's pretty cool. There's a little pack rat somewhere back there. He'll probably be staring at you. That's a nice square set. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of cool looking. It's been so long since I've been in here, but this is fun. I forgot what it was like. I love doing this stuff. 
Yeah, that's cool. People don't understand. They just don't get it. Yeah, there's our little buddy. Look at him right there. Where? Oh, he's right over there. Oh, he's behind that rock now. Mm, I guess we got a little pack rat in here somewhere. They're funny. They, they got a big bushy tail. They're actually pretty cute. Yeah, they're actually kind of cute for the stinky little buggers. Yeah, it's crazy when you look at how smooth, and when you get into places like where the actual vein, yeah, there he is right there. Where? Oh. There, there is him. <laughs> he's like, what are you guys doing in my house? Yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah, he's like. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, but you see how, like this is so smooth and it's. Yeah. It's like glass. I mean, just look at the way it fractures when they go through it. Is there any money in there? Nah, there's no vein back here. I think they were just looking for what was above and they were just kind of wandering. If you notice the yeah. way they wander around like this, that usually means they don't know where they're going. Yeah. <laughs> well, they know where they're going, they just don't know what's going to be there, but. Yeah. I'm going to take. I like how it's notched. What do they call that? It's just a square set. Just a square set notch? Yeah. So what you do is then you notch the beam on top yeah. and then it sits there like a. Like a L, you know, like that shape, yeah. and it would, and then you just what you do is when you set them all together, and you wedge it in from the side, the pressure of the wall holds it all together. You don't even need a nail, huh. and they're strong. I mean, you can, yeah. There was a big car on top of them. Wasn't it the guy that did the Comstock load? Wasn't that the guy that developed yeah. it, or it was developed there? Yeah, that uh, Cornish guy or German guy, something like that. That actually is a cool picture. Go back and do that again. I'm going to get a photo of you. You were looking at the wall. It looked pretty cool. I'm going to turn my lights off and get a picture of you doing that. Just stay there. A video of it. That's cool, man. Look at that. Serpentine. It looks like clamshells. So this is called serpentine? Yeah, it's serpentine. This is a... A little bit different version of what's back there, but it's the same tip type of stuff. Huh. But it's this stuff probably has a little bit more. It's weird because it's a couple. I don't know how to word it, but it's huh. some of it just looks a little different, but it's all kind of the same. But it's pretty brittle. You could almost just go through it with a hammer. <laughs> Yeah, the the uh, the rats, the uh, pack rats are cuter than your regular rat you got living around the houses and stuff. Uh -huh. Actually, I gotta admit, man, this thing is really holding up. I mean, there's almost no rock fall in this tunnel at all. Yeah. How far back this go? That goes pretty far. Let's go. It's about the same as that one, I think. All right. There's a little splitter here. I wonder which side they put in first. The rails down here, they probably put that one in first. They found a vein here. There. A little stringer. They followed that for a couple of feet. Yeah. Probably had nothing. Right here. Yeah. It wasn't worth it. I don't, I don't know if they've ever assayed anything. These little veins in here. So did this thing ever make any money? No, nah, this would never make it didn't make anything. Oh. That's pretty cool. And this is more of that, what's this called again? Serpentine. Serpentine. Yeah, we go in and out of it in several places. It is there any value to this stuff any for anything? Nah, I don't even know what you would use it. I don't I think it's so sharp because it's like it's like glass that I've cut myself on this stuff so many times. I mean, look how sharp it is. It's just, it's like, yeah. it's almost like rock glass. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. I saw some miners graffiti on the wall. I don't know if that was legit or not. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I missed it. I'll have to look at it. Uh, hey, next trip. Remind me to bring my 
carbide lamp. Yeah, we leave our marks. Yeah. Oh, here. Oh, for me. <laughs> oh, wow, look at all that. Look at that. Chris Bell, 2000. Where is that? 2007? <laughs> Chris Bell, 2007. That was the last time I was in here. That's funny. Kind of warm in here, isn't it? And WUE, of course. <laughs> wow. That's cool. There's a jar. I'm going to get a picture. All right, well, we made it to the, the back of the right tunnel, and we've already been in the left tunnel. Kind of reversed the uh, right-hand rule. We went left-hand rule today. I know we did. <laughs> Frank usually does the right-hand rule, which is actually a good idea, but it's all right. You went, to, you went to the left, so we got to do something different. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't hit that vein up from up above. I don't know, maybe it just doesn't... This is why they almost need a core drill, so you don't tunnel out the surface. It's Halloween. This is kind of fitting that we get a shot like this. So, <laughs> there you go. It is Halloween all day long. Oh, I love it. It looks like someone wrote exit. Or maybe, I don't know, it looks like an X, I, and a T, but I'm like, no way. That's the exit? <laughs> Well, someone had, someone torched it. Someone put it, the E there is with a miner's torch. But it's probably somebody, could have been somebody like us. Nice. That, that was Dan's name there. Dan, there was a D, there's the A, and I can see the N. Oh, it's this trap right there. I don't yeah, know. I don't know what that. So I see the finger marks on there, just yeah. kind of sliding along. Northwest Underground Expeditions. I'm gonna do it over here. I'm gonna do Cousin Jack. Can't read mine. <laughs> I can't read. I can't even read my own. Oh well, it's all right. Well, you did yours nice. You can actually see yours. Something like oh, look at that. 2020. That's right. So you really messed them up. Put 1941. Yeah. Yeah. Come back in here and write like. Well, Mark thinks in the uh, the non pariah that that's all made up. I'm like, no, it's not. Nah, because there's there's stuff from years ago that people saw that. Well, it's not only like that. Most guys aren't gonna because those names are actually real names from the miners. Well, I know my uh, my buddy in the UK was telling me about he saw all the names on the wall and he said those are all Cornish. Yeah. And that's that one. Uh, that's that mine where I heard the Tommy knocker. You know. The pounding on the wall. Boom, yeah. Boom. Is that an old ammo box? Ammo. I don't know what it was. An old uh, dynamite box? It's too small to be yeah, dynamite. Yeah, probably right. I'd love to find a dynamite box someday. Oh. Intact yeah, one. I found one of the black jacks on here. It's probably one of the only places you could find one. Is that, <laughs> if we could get back. Is that still open? I, would say, um, I don't know if it's still open now, but by everything I've seen up here, Someone said that the entrance was all kind of sloughed in again. But if you dig it open, like I said, if you, if you could dig through that one collapse, but it was, it sucks. I could see through it. And I was like, oh, I can climb. Start right there. I'm going to turn my, turn my headlamp back on again. Starting back here. This is where uh, Chris and I came down. Got the left, got the, pardon me, got the right, and got the left. I'm gonna flip it around here, and now we're gonna head out. It kind of kind of does a little S turn through here, which is kind of cool. Kind of be interested to see how my uh, yeah, look at this guy's turn around. <laughs> there you go. There's the entrance right there. That's cool. 
smells less less pack ready now. These butterflies, or these are actually not butterflies, they're the moths. There's a yeah, bunch of these, yeah, they're all over the walls in here. That's really neat. Wow, okay, guys, have a nice winter. All right, guys, just like that, we're back to the entrance here. I'm gonna turn off my light, yeah, that's kind of cool. Let me get a picture of this. Hey, Chris, stay there. I'm gonna get a picture of this, it's kind of cool. I'm gonna head back out here and we'll be down at the Golden Eagle. And uh, thanks to Chris's friend Dan for letting us have access to this. All right, so now we're back outside. It's a lot cooler out here than it was in the mine. The mine was actually getting kind of hot. All right, see you guys in the next place. <clears throat> All right, we are leaving the Golden Eagle Mine and uh, heading down the hill here. And then go up, see if we can find a few more mines that are here. And Chris knows where they're at. It's just a matter of uh, if they're open or not. So, all right, we'll see what we find. See you in a bit. Bye. All right, guys, this is an old uh, mill site right here. Pretty cool. Got an old diesel engine right there. Not sure what it is. Um, let's see. I don't see any. I see numbers, but I don't see any data plates or anything like that. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, check this out. I think it's big. It's probably about, I don't know seven, eight feet across. And then that's, uh, it's actually an ore chute, metal ore chute. And we're way up the hill. There's another, another mine up there. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. It's another old uh, mill that's just kind of rusted away. Surprised actually how well this metal is holding up. All the woods kind of deteriorating with the metal. Be here for quite a quite a long, quite a bit longer. Anyway, I don't know if you guys can see over there, but that's uh, that's just a big long uh, mine dump tailings pile. And then up there, you can't see it, but there's actually a cable that runs across. So, all right, guys, here's a. Uh, Another mine. I don't really. I don't know what the name of this mine is. I mean, we've run into several mines up here so far. Um, Chris has got cool stoop. So let's see if I can find, figure out the name of this one. But uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of water on the bottom, but nothing too bad. None of these, none of these mines have a ton of water in them. Because this side of the state doesn't get the water. The rest of the state does. I see a lot of bugs, so it probably means there's some rats in here. This is cool. Someone's been in here working it, obviously. Oh, wow, look at all the... <laughs> so many moths huh? there are so many moths on the side it's a cool little stope huh. it's a rat's nest right there Yeah, 
this is nice because it gives you a really idea of how big some of these veins are up here. You see the vein? Oh wow, cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I get a picture of that. Yeah. You know, like, so the vein comes there and then there was a split and then it went up this side. Yeah. So you can kind of see, when you get into geology, it's interesting to see where you'll have two veins and it's fractured in between with serpentine and some, but yeah, so you had a rich side here, probably there, and down below it's probably pretty rich down where it came together. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty cool looking. You see a while those butterflies are in here, it's so warm. Yeah, they come and hibernate for the year. Jeez. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's that, pretty neat. I'm looking. glad we did this. Now, what's this one called? This was called the Y Tunnel. The Y? Yeah, at first I thought it was because there used to be two entrances, like a Y. Yep. But later, when I actually did my research, it was because the um, there's two veins that intersect here at this point. Oh, okay. And they intersect at a Y, so they tunneled in on it. And there's actually a glory, oh, there's a hole up here. They, there's a big giant. <laughs> The vein outcrop to the surface and they found a pocket there. So if you go up that stope and off to the right, you can come out the surface? No, not on this. There's there's on the outside, there's an actual on the surface. They took it from up there and they went down about 12, 15 feet. Huh. But then they quit and they didn't connect them underground. Cool. You see these little where you see these little veinlets with the high grade, that red orange. Yeah. That's you find that high grade in those areas. You can see like there's tons of little stringers and yeah, and uh, when you when you go right here, you can see right here the vein too. You can tell there's been rats in here. Oh yeah, you can smell the nests right there's there. Another a giant nest. nest on that boulder. Another nest there. Stinky, Huge stinky. Nest. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad yeah. we came in here. Yeah, that's a neat one. So you call this one the Y tunnel? Yeah, the Y tunnel. Did it even have a mine name or just they no, call it? That was that's all they called it. The it's Y the tunnel. Old, old maps. It says Y tunnel. Huh. Interesting. And uh, there was only one, we found one section they talked about it because the vein intersected in the Y. But it's hard to tell right where I'm standing here, but the wall's kind of dirty, but the way, the vein is about seven feet wide here. The, the vein is seven feet wide? Yeah. The Dang. Going towards the surface. That's impressive. So I think Clinton, then, it looks like with all these wires and stuff here, they he was probably going to come in here and try to pull some of this out and, and uh, just process it. So is this an old miner's road? No. So when, in the 80s and 60s, up to the 80s when they started putting these roads in, yeah. I think they were just pushing roads all over the place looking for stuff. Maybe thinking they'd go eventually get to some place. Or some of them depend. Now I know these, some of these mines that we've been looking at, they're still, people are still actively trying to find gold. How long have they actually been here? Since when? How far back did they go? Well, it was all discovered in 1874. 1874? Holy smoke. We're talking, what, it's almost 130 years. Yeah, and the um, wow. big company came in at uh, around 1905 is when they really, they put the big stamp mill and... So, that's closer to 140, that's 140, 46 years. Gee whiz, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Wow. So the stamp mill came in around 1900, the big one. And that's when they really were developing. For about seven years, they really were just tunneling the shit out of all that, that lower stuff. The Meteor, the Blackjack, the Saffin, Sandell. They're all connected underground. And then they did some exploratory work up above. They also drove in the Fackler, because there's a there's another vein over there. There's the Pulpit vein, and um, that's a separate vein. So there's a couple different them, but the Pulpit's pretty rich. And uh, that one, they drove in the Fackler tunnel, and they had a the one called the Big Mouth, and then there was another one up there. And they hit the vein at all different depths, and then there's the North Star. That's another vein. And these are all back in the uh, 1880s, 1890s? Those, uh, those, those Fackler ones, 
They were a little bit newer. Those were put in in like the the 60s, 70s, and up until oh, okay. 1985, I think they were. The Fackler, they they got a video up here. I think it was like 84, 85, and they actually took them in there, and they still had all the drilling equipment, and they had the mucker sitting there, and the mill was still running. He even went in and turned the mill kind of on. He showed them that everything worked in there, and uh, that so, was a guy named Priestley. So, um. Like the hummingbird and the, the meteor, how how old are they? How far those, back? Those they were go? a put start around 1905. 1905. Okay. Chris, Chris says that this spot here, this goes down to a tunnel apparently. Let's see if my uh, trekking pole go down there. Well, whatever it is, it's caved in, but my pole can go all the way down in there. Yeah. So it was huh. at one point when I dug it open, you could look down in there. And see, and I, it doesn't look like it was very long, but I think all they were doing is probably trying to figure out which where the vein was and how far away they were. But so there's all kinds of uh, yeah, well, you, there's all kinds of holes and portals all over this yeah, these yeah. hills. Well, this is as far as I got, huh. which I still don't know where this material came from. Yeah, because it looks like a tailing pile, but there's no tunnel here. Yeah. Wow. The um, the bees nest. All right. So what we're doing, guys, is we're coming down on a mine called the Sandell. Uh, we don't know if it's open or closed. We're gonna find out. Get there. All right, guys. This is uh this is the upper Sandell mine, and uh, there's really nothing here. It's all it's all collapse. Uh, Chris said they tried to get into the years ago. They, they even had a, a site set up here where they were camping at the campfire and the whole thing. They come up here in the winter time. But they, how many bar, how many wheelbarrows did you say? Uh, a, a thousand. You can see which pile is. Yeah, large. and they never, uh, and they were never able to get so it open. This is the original mine dump I'm standing on. Yeah. And you see from basically here up, that whole pile all the way around is what we took out of there. Did you have an excavator? No, we used that wheelbarrow. Just right a wheelbarrow. There. So that's probably all dug by hand. This is probably twenty-five by twenty-five, probably about yeah, four, feet, four deep. feet deep. Yeah, that's a lot of. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, we all the way around wow. the whole side, this whole pot, because this used to be the actual top. Yeah. And we used to have a fire pit out here. Actually, yeah. that's probably the fire pit right there, and then we just buried everything and moved our camp over over there. Cool. But we the wheelbarrow's still there and the tires low, yeah. but it's still. In all right, so this is an old tram wheel right here. And you said this is a tram bucket? Yeah, that's a old tram bucket. That's really small. Yeah, they were pretty tiny. And this one's riveted too, so that's uh, what, 1920 or older? Oh, it's, it's uh, 1905, I 1905. think. 1905, wow. That's kind of cool. Alright, well this is the uh, Sandell Mine. And unfortunately it's uh, got a bit of a collapse. Chris said probably a couple hours worth of work we could open it up, but yeah. we don't have a chainsaw, we don't have any tools. So um, this will have to wait for another time. Yeah. All right, it's okay. It is what it is, right? I don't know if I showed you guys this before. It's kind of neat though. You're just you're walking along the road, and there's this uh, basically a hole in the side, which is it's obviously a tunnel of some kind going somewhere. It's not very big, Chris said, but uh, just right off the path. So we've actually seen up here so far. We're heading back to the car now. I think what seven mines. Yeah, uh, we were only able to get into a couple of them, but uh, there's like seven mines up here. And yeah, pretty cool. All right, guys, this one's called the Matt Wick. Mine, and I'm gonna check it out real quick. He said it doesn't go, it doesn't go back that far, but we're gonna run back in here. I can already smell rats. Ugh. Yep, there's rat food there. Oh, all right. Not too excited in here. I think he said it went back 112 feet. Got some old holes here that he, uh, he drilled for dynamite or cores. Kind of cool. This is 
zip. Well, nothing too exciting here. <laughs> just a rat's nest. Not even a new one, just a rat's nest. So, all right. So this is pretty much just the, I think this is exploratory tunnel. Although there might've been a little bit of vein in here. Um, actually there is, I can see a little bit of vein. So I don't know what they were able to get out of here. Something I can ask Chris. All right. And out of this one here. As you can see, that was pretty short. So you guys just saw as much of it as I did. And now here we are back at the entrance, just like that. All right, guys, we're done. Um, again, in here, you'll see these, uh, all these butterflies, moths, whatever. They're just hibernating for the winter. That's pretty neat, huh? Get out of there. <laughs> Get out of the elements. Yeah. These caves we've been into, the tunnels we've been into, they've got quite a few of these. So, it's nice to see the wildlife taking advantage of this, getting out of the elements. All right, I'm gonna uh, turn this off and take some pictures. Okay, took my pictures and I head out now. So um, that was it, guys. So heading on out here. We're gonna go go back to the car. See if we can find some more um, some more mines and there's a couple that are down this road so all right guys heading into this mine this is called the keynote mine any uh, anything of significance here Chris it's another hole it's another hole in the ground I think, I think you got two to three hundred feet and then there's a I think there's a little side tunnel in the back maybe a few feet but you going in too uh, I'm gonna hang out here all right nothing dangerous in there. Well, that's, maybe, that's, maybe not, the maybe, that's not what I was worried about. I was just wondering if you were coming in. <laughs> There's a little box top of some kind. Rats in here again. Oh yeah. Is there any veins in here? Uh, if there would be, it'd be way at the back. But, All right. Uh, I think they were just trying to get to the Pashaskin vein. All right. So guys, again, this may be another another mine that's got nothing in it. This one's longer than the last one I was in. Got some rolling rock beer. Nice. Big old uh, rat nest. Yeah, I think he says it goes back a couple, 300 feet. Said they were trying to get to the, the Peshastan mine. So. Oh, this one. Oh, you know, this splits off. Hmm. Do the right hand rule. Let's go here to the left, to the right. Go down here and see if there's anything in here. in here some uh, miners graffiti I think I'm not sure um, that might be modern no, it's hard to tell you turn off this light and see if yeah huh. I don't see any dates on here or anything like that huh. all right so I went down to the end of that tunnel I'm gonna go over here Go back to the main one. There's some more graffiti. Yeah, I don't know what it says. It's hard to tell. And after this, we're going to go to one called the Black Hawk, or Blackjack Mine. This used to have rails in it. And they obviously took those out. It's not even. anything left here there's an old tie right there and 
doesn't have it's just there's really nothing in this mine at all. My phone was telling me I was out of memory, so I had to switch to uh, 1080p instead of 4K. Although with this stuff, you probably won't notice much difference. No. Oh. This actually goes back further than I thought it was going to go. It looks like it collapses right here. Yeah, it did. It looks like this was gonna, they're trying to, huh. well, ouch. Let's go up the top of here. So it keeps on going. Um, there's really nothing in here. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what's down here. If I'm here to document it, I might as well document it. This is the end right here. All right, and turn around, head out. crumble these here I'm actually backing down this cave this cave in right here because the ceiling is so low sorry for the crappy video all right so there you go I was just I was just up in there and I went over the top and down the other side all right all right, we're going to head on out. All right. Now you guys have seen the key note mine. Ouch. Keep bumping my head. So, anyway, you guys have seen the key note mine. And that's it. All right, I'm gonna turn off the camera and take some pictures and I'll see you guys outside. All right guys, we're back out, we're done. That's the keynote mine. We're gonna head down the trail here and see if we can find the uh, blackjack. Oh. Yeah, the to the blackjack is actually right there at uh, Chris said it's an old tool room. But you could go to the back of the tool room and then down into the mine because the original entrance is uh, collapsed. But it um, uh, looks like a tree fell down the hill and uh, covered it. So maybe another day we can come back with some picks and shovels and try to get in. But um, hey, so what, tell me what this pipe is. <clears throat> That's the old water flume uh, to run the powerhouse. Okay. So they had this old riveted water pipe. It came, apparently it was like five miles, I think. Yeah. Five or seven miles. Oh, wow. And they piped it from way up above and they ran it. And um, some places it was a wooden box and some places they used the pipe. 
Yeah. And um, there's an old mill back that way. There was there's an old uh, Arastra and the old schoolhouse and post office were over near the road over there. Huh. And there also is a giant Arastra down the creek still. You can go down and look at it. It's made out of stone, but it's pretty big. Okay, cool. Hey guys, this is so you can go down into the the blackjack. This is like um, the mine. There should be a head frame right here, and. Uh, it's probably about 20, 20 feet, 25 feet down there. And then Chris said, if you go off to the right, you can um, get into the blackjack. So uh, I'm not gonna do that today, but I think uh, that's something we could definitely do down the road. Fun time, right, man. Guys, uh, Chris and I are done uh, exploring the mines. Um, there's an old mill site here. And uh, check this out, it's all rock work here. I'm gonna walk up to the old mill site real quick. And uh, you guys can check it out. A lot of the wood still uh, still here. Look at that rock work. That is cool stuff. There in the old mill site here. You guys remember that mill um, over there at uh, the Rex and Ryan mine? how good a condition that was uh, this one is obviously bigger but no nowhere near the same kind of condition so this is neat I know it's all just a bunch of twisted broken metal and wood but uh, this is cool stuff at least to me it's cool stuff so, just uh, reminders of old yesteryear so, all right, well, I'm going to take some pictures, and uh, we'll see you guys a little bit later. All right, bye. This is an old, uh, this is, should be the town of Liberty, which is an old mining town, and uh, people still live here. And I actually think that a lot of these houses are original, right, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Some of them are still the old ones from the 20s and 30s. Yeah, wow. Like those, like some of these you can see there. Yeah. And you got new modern ones, but. I mean, you got, and yeah, like you said, there's new houses in here that are made to look like old. the original ones. Yeah. But, uh, like this one, I think was built in the 90s, and there was a couple of these that were built in the 80s. And, oh. Look at this, all this cool stuff here. I don't know if he's got anything neat here. Oh, there's all kinds of cool junk, though. We got junkyard. We got Trump 2020. Like, dude. Sweet. Like him. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Well, this has all been redone. You used, I thought there's a museum up here. I don't know. This used to be a really awesome ore car. I was sitting out here years ago. 